Honorable Member for Kingston and the Island. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Uh, je me lève aujourd'hui uh, en appuyant, en appuyant uh, le, le député de Halifax West uh, qui a introduit le projet de loi C-278. Uh, it's a, a bill designed to make the 26th of March a Purple Day all across Canada every year. And the purpose is to raise awareness of epilepsy and to help epilepsy sufferers and to help their family, their friends, their communities uh, recognize that there are many among us uh, who suffer from, from epilepsy, but they're just part of us. And uh, an awareness will help um, all of us recognize how to help epilepsy sufferers, help them during a seizure, and help them reduce uh, the stigma that's attached uh, to epilepsy. I'd like to start, uh, je veux commencer en reconnaissant uh, la présence ici de uh, Madame Susan Harrison, la directrice uh, exécutive de Epilepsy and Seizure Disorder Resource Center uh, dans mon comté de, de Kingston et les Îles. Um, you know, I am not standing up speaking today because I'm an expert on epilepsy. Actually, I, I, I'm standing up today because, because I was ignorant. <laughs> And, and am relatively ignorant of epilepsy. And I'm standing up here today because of a young woman who is a friend and a constituent and a resident of, of, of Kingston who um, told me during the last election campaign that I really had to go to an event. Um, and it was called Purple Day. And I, I, at first, I didn't know what it was. Uh, but it was an event at which I really I, I attended, and I sat there and, and listened, and I really realized that I didn't understand epilepsy at all. And I want to start out by thanking this young woman, Kim McFarlane, who is the secretary of the Epilepsy and uh, Seizure Disorder Resource Centers of Southeastern Ontario, uh, for inviting me to that event and also for sharing um, a lot of her own personal experiences, which I will relate uh, in, in my speech today. You know, I, I didn't know that, for example, one in a hundred uh, people suffer from epilepsy, and that means about 300,000 uh, Canadians, and, and probably a couple of, uh, of uh, members of, of the House of Commons are epilepsy sufferers. And, I, and very importantly, I didn't realize how many different types of epilepsy uh, there are, and a lot of th that there are stereotypes in, in our, uh, mostly in, in, in our visual entertainment, of what it means to have an epilepsy seizure. And so that means that uh, we don't often recognize it in our daily lives, and we may confuse it and, and think that something, is, uh, something else is happening when, when really we have to recognize that epilepsy is a, is a possibility and, and deal with it accordingly. So I'd like to uh, quote from, uh, from my, uh, my friend Kim, who talks about uh, her own uh, type of epilepsy. And she says, I apparently look spaced out with a glazed look over my face for 15 seconds to a minute. However, when I come around, I don't remember anything, and usually I'm pretty tired. I could walk from point A to point B, but I will, won't remember how I got there. I could even have a conversation with someone, yet I won't remember a word of it. One moment I'm working away, the next thing I know that there's a lapse of time I can't account for, that I'm trying to piece together what happened. Of course, I'll never remember that brief period. All seizures are different, and not everyone will have the exact same every single time. Sometimes I space out, sometimes I'll mumble, and other times, well, even carry on what I was doing. This is just the snapshot of two of the many different types of seizures that exist. And so it's very important, and, and I, you know, if somebody told me those symptoms a year ago, I would not have associated them with, with ep epilepsy at all. And recognition of a day like Purple Day, giving it official recognition, giving it official recognition across the country, will help with that awareness. And every bit of awareness of fellow members of our community will help us bring us closer and allow us to help each other uh, better. So another aspect of awareness is to help in different kinds of seizures, to help uh, somebody who's suffering from a seizure with safety during that seizure and also help 
support them when they come out of this uh, seizure because often when, when people come out of seizures, they're confused and they might be scared because they don't remember what happened and they have to figure out where they are now that the seizure is over. And I'd like to again uh, uh, quote from my, my friend uh, uh, Kim about the stigma that's, that's connected with seizure because that's, that's another, that's the second thing about awareness. Not only when somebody is having seizure or right afterwards um, and, and learning what to do, uh, you know, but learning how to live with other members in the community who have epilepsy and recognizing that they're just like everybody else. There's a couple of things they can't do. They need special care for a few minutes sometimes or, or longer. Um, but we really have to avoid, it, avoid the stigma. And to understand what, what that stigma can mean, I'd like to quote from, uh, from Kim McFarland again. Now, she suffered from epilepsy as a young child, uh, just like uh, uh, the, the person who is uh, responsible for this bill. Her name is uh, Cassidy Megan, a member of the, uh, a resident of the constituency of Halifax West. So, so my friend Kim also uh, was diagnosed with epilepsy when she was a child. She says, I remember the first time I ever directly felt the stigma attached to epilepsy. I was in grade six rehearsing for our spring play. When at the moment that it was my turn to say my lines, I had an absence seizure in front of everyone. Since I wasn't saying my lines, my teacher thought I must have been defiant. She threatened to send me to the office if, it, if I didn't answer her. That day still sticks with me. There have been many other instances too where I've heard comments over the years, including more recently, which one could describe as, as ignorant. Imagine, if you will, hearing someone refer to the second hand of a clock as something that looks like it's having a seizure. Or standing in Dundas Square in Toronto watching hip-hop break dancers and hearing two guys behind you say they look like they're having seizures. Or watching one of your favorite reality shows and a judge refers to a contestant's dance piece as though he's having a seizure because the body movements were a little crazy and all over the place. This is only a smidgen of things I've heard, and I'm only one person. Other times people just automatically assume that because I said the word epilepsy or the word seizure, they start panicking and think I must have uh, tonic clonic seizures and that I will convulse on the ground because this is the only type of seizure that is typically portrayed on primetime shows. However, the reality is I'd rather stop someone stop and ask me questions than just make assumptions. It's better, better to become educated than to remain ignorant. The point of Purple Day is about raising awareness about education and about eliminating the stigma that is attached to epilepsy. As long as that stigma remains, many with the disorder will not disclose or talk about it for fear of backlash or prejudice. And so that is, that is one of the purposes of designating March the 26th as Purple Day, to deal with the stigma and to educate people. And, and it's also an opportunity to tell people about some uh, famous names, famous people who, who have also suffered from epilepsy. And I, and I draw today from a speech uh, that my honorable colleague from Halifax West gave. He mentioned a number of famous people as, as uh, people who suffered from epilepsy. Dostoevsky and Neil Young, artists. Uh, Flo jo, Florence Griffith Joyner, the athlete. Uh, actors, uh, Margot Hemingway and Danny Glover, and Pope Pius IX. So, so Purple Day is a chance to, to especially tell, especially children, that there are many very accomplished uh, people in history, in the world, who are co-sufferers of, of epilepsy. And maybe even suffering is the wrong word to use in some place. It's just part of who they are. Um, who, who, you know, they're not somebody different. They're not somebody outside of, of, of the mainstream of society. And so that is an opportunity, another opportunity uh, that we have uh, when we, if we were to make Purple Day a, uh, a national uh, a day of recognition and awareness. And I'd like to conclude, uh, Madam Speaker, with, again, with a, with a statement from, uh, from my friend Kim, who's... Uh, been working uh, to, to support people and, and help uh, make everybody more aware of epilepsy for a long time. She says, everyone is unique and has their own special talents. Everyone deserves to be treated equally and fairly and not threatened by backlash or prejudged in any way. If one in a hundred Canadians have epilepsy, 
Statistically speaking, how many members of parliament, senators, staff members, and all of their family and friends have this neurological disorder? Help bring epilepsy out of the shadows by not only supporting Bill C-278 and asking questions instead of making assumptions, and by encouraging discussion, dialogue, and awareness, not only here on Parliament Hill, but also in your own constituencies. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, resuming debate, uh, the Honorable...